We will begin our day with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the lady from the 73rd House District, Representative Karen Mathiak. Representative Mathiak. Good morning and thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my pleasure today to not only introduce the pastor of the day, but a great friend, Benny Tate from Milner, Georgia, and the gentleman that he has with him today is Pastor Don Knapp, Director of Missions, Pastor Larry Ballard, Men's Minister, and Pastor Charles Gilbert, their CFO, and I'm so glad to have you gentlemen with me today. Pastor Benny's church is very genuine, and I hope you will enjoy him and love him as much as I do. Well, good morning. Great to be here. It's a great day, right? Great day. A few uh, days back, my wife got up and she said, good morning. I said, good morning. She said, Benny, do you know what today is? And I began to think, what is today? And I went on to work and began to process. Is today our anniversary? Is today my wife's birthday? Tell you how to always remember your wife's birthday. Just forget it one year. Amen? <laughs> but again, to think, what is it? But there's a lady in our church runs a florist. And I said, send Barbara some flowers. She said, what's the occasion? I said, it's a special occasion. Just send the flowers. There's a little boutique in Griffin, Georgia, where we do most of our shopping. I think the name of it's Walmart. I ran by there and picked her up a nice dress. I took it home. And I said, uh, tonight we're going to go out for dinner. No need to heat up the kitchen as if the microwave would do that. But uh, we went out and we had a great dinner. And I said, you know, Barbara, at the end of the evening, I said, it's been a wonderful, wonderful day. She said, it has been a wonderful day. I said, you know, Barbara, I didn't forget, did I? She said, no, Benny, you didn't forget. She said, you know, I believe it's been the greatest Groundhog's Day I've ever experienced. <laughs> Folks, I want to take a few moments and... Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not, I say to you what Elizabeth Taylor said to her eighth husband, I'm not going to keep you long. <laughs> but I am going to take a few moments and I want to talk to you about we all have an it. We all have an it. There's a scripture in John 14 and 14 and this is what it says. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. This is what I know about Speaker Ralston. He has an it. <laughs> he probably has a lot of its. This is what I know about you. You have an it. I have an it. Your it may be a family issue. It may be a financial issue. It may be a decision issue. It may be a health issue. It may be a situation with a child. It may be a situation with your parents. But every one of us have an it. And the scripture says, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. You say, well, what causes God to do it? John 15 and 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Three little words and you can stick a fork in me, I'm done. Number one is abide. Abide. If you abide in me, what does that mean? It means to stay in fellowship. Stay in fellowship. I got married in 1984. 1984. My wife and I decided that divorce would not be a part of our vocabulary. Murder is, but divorce is not. <laughs> if you went to the courthouse in Marin County, Tennessee, our license has been there, marriage license all this time. We've constantly been in relationship, but I want you to know we hadn't always been in fellowship. We hadn't always been in fellowship. I wrote the book, Happy Wife, Happy Life. If mom ain't happy, they ain't nobody happy, and if daddy ain't happy, they ain't nobody cares. You almost laughed. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There's a difference between being in relationship and being in fellowship. And you can be in relationship with God and not be in fellowship with God. But God wants us to be in fellowship with him. And what breaks relationship is sin. So that word I want you to see, it's abide. We've got to be in 
fellowship with God. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask. There's a second word I want you to get. Ask. James 4 and 2 says, we have not because we ask not. Listen, folks, I respect all of you. It matters not to me whether you're a Democrat or a Republican. I pastor 8,000 people, and I've got all different types. It, it, it matters not to me. But I want you to know something. We all need prayer. There was a guy who knew a little bit about politics. His name was Abraham Lincoln. And he said, I've been driven to my knees by an overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. My wisdom and all about me seemed insufficient for the day. Abraham Lincoln understood that we've got to ask somebody that's wiser than us. The answers for our country is not in Washington. The answer for our country is in heaven by turning to God Almighty and looking to him for answers. So that little word abide, that little word ask, but then there's that last word. It's the word answer. I'm grateful that God's not reluctant to answer our prayers. God wants to answer your prayers, and God wants to answer my prayers. A little boy said to his dad one day, he said, you know, Daddy, I'd like a brother or sister. He said, well, you need to pray. So he prayed a month, prayed two months, he prayed three months. Nothing happened, so he quit praying. And Miss Susan, about six months later, his dad said, go with me. And he takes him down to the hospital and walks in there, and there's his mother. Pulls back the curtain, there's the little baby. Pulls back the curtain a little more, there's another baby. She'd had twins. Pulls back the curtain a little more, there's another baby. She'd had triplets. And the dad looked at his son and said, Aren't you glad you prayed? He said, yeah, Daddy. But he said, aren't you glad I stopped after three months? <laughs> I got up one morning to rush into the day. I had so much to accomplish, I didn't have time to pray. Problems just tumbled about me. Ever came each task. Why doesn't God help me? He replied, you didn't ask. I wanted to see joy and beauty, but the day tore on gray and bleak. Why doesn't God help me? He replied, you didn't seek. I tried to come into God's presence. I used all my keys at the lock, but God gently and lovingly chided, oh, my child, but you didn't knock. Representatives, I got up this morning. I paused before I entered the day because we got so much to accomplish. We better take time to pray. Let's pray. Lord, as we bow our heads and our hearts in your presence, you tell us if any man lack wisdom, let us ask of you. And God, I pray for these men and women. I thank you for their sacrifice. To serve in the House of Representatives is a sacrifice. They sacrifice their families. They sacrifice their time. They sacrifice their physical energy. They sacrifice their health. I thank you for these individuals. And I pray your blessing and your wisdom and your guidance upon them. Thank you for what they do for our state. And thank you for what they do for you. Now, would you bless them and keep them? Make your face to shine upon them. Be gracious unto them. Lift your countenance upon them. And may they experience your peace. For I pray this prayer, respecting all faiths. But I pray this prayer in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.